In this video, I'm gonna show you how to wire up a Blue Ghost module. So the Blue Ghost module is how we control these LEDs. By far the most reliable module, and it's gonna give you the most uh, custom ability. Is that a word? It's gonna give you the most customization of your headlights and tail. So let's start with what all you'll need to wire it up. The first and most obvious is gonna be the Blue Ghost module, which comes with the module and two connectors. Next up is a small Phillips head screwdriver and a very small flathead screwdriver. Even smaller than some of your pocket screwdrivers. The, uh, the screws inside the module are actually really tiny. You're also gonna need a pair of dikes and a pair of wire strippers. Various types of wires next up. Uh, I like this four wire since it's all together. It makes uh, the whole harness look really clean. And then uh, I have really long red and black wire so I can run uh, power and ground. This is probably the best thing you can use, some wire loom. Wire loom is what's gonna take your install to the next level. It's gonna look really clean and professional. And it's also gonna protect the wires from any uh, rubbing or shorts that it could potentially get. Now, this is something that you may or may not need. This is a 12 volt to five volt converter. It really depends on the time type of LEDs that you're using. Some addressable LEDs are five volts and some are 12 volts. So it really just depends on your install specifically. Okay, step one is gonna be to remove all of these screws. I've already removed three of them. So I'm just gonna remove the last one and that's gonna expose the actual Blue Ghost module. They have this cheat sheet on their website that shows you what each input and output is. So starting from right to left, we have power in, ground, ground, 12 volt power for the relays, then input one, input two, input three, input four, which is brake, park, left, right. Those other four inputs are if you have the Blue Ghost Plus and want to have the extra relays so you can have other accessories go from a uh, Bluetooth controller on your phone. In this case, we're using a light just because we don't need all these extra relays. Down here, we have all the outputs. This is ground, data, voltage ground data voltage. So you can use the connectors. So you can use the connectors that the module came with right off of the module for the outputs, but you'll still have to find another connector and wire it out to the tail light. Instead, I like to use the big wire roll and go right off of the module and go all the way out to the tail light and then do my connectors at the tail light. In my experience, it's easier for the customer to install the tail lights on the car without having all this extra wire hanging out of the back. Before you cut any of the wires, you're gonna wanna figure out where you want to place the module inside the car because it could be different if you're gonna set it in the engine bay versus in the trunk. In this case, we're gonna wire it up for a trunk setup. Okay, I've determined that I need about this much wire on either side, so I'm gonna get two more of these. Okay, all the wires are cut. Now we can start adding it to the Blue Ghost module. I'm gonna start with the output. I strip just a little bit off so that it's enough to go in, but not enough to have excess wire hanging out of the screw connectors. This is why you need a really small screwdriver because the screw terminals are extremely small. We've got all of our inputs wired in and we have our outputs wired in for the right and left light. Now we can do the power and ground. So the way I figure out how much power wire I need is a little ridiculous. I kind of just gauge it from the outside of the car. I'll just, I'll just show you. Okay, we need about that much. And we have the power and ground wire. You could go ahead and put this directly on the module, but I like to add the converter right here next to the module. Always remember heat shrink. Okay, we've got the converter on there and the power wires on there. And I know that this looks like a total mess, but once I put the loom on it, it's going to clean up really nicely. And again, the converter is only because I'm using five volt addressables and not 12. This is pretty much completely wired up. The uh, only things we'll have to do now are add some loom 
and some connectors. There's a few options when it comes to connectors. Um, JSTs is an option. The only problem with that is that they are not waterproof. So a lot of people don't like to use it for headlights. I'll still use them for taillights here and there but a lot of people wanna use the waterproof ones that screw on. So really it's up to you what you wanna use. Of course, before we do the connectors, you have to do loom, otherwise you won't be able to get the connector on there. Okay, and now you can tell just how much better this looks with the loom versus without. So you're gonna to wanna to do connectors out of the back of the headlight on both sides. Then I like to split it side to side and have connectors there. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what mine looks like. So here's the Blue Ghost module and it is potted with potting epoxy. This is your power and ground coming all the way out. It is quite long because this is a uh, tail light module. So I've got power that's fused, ground, and it goes into a 12 volt to five volt converter. Then we've got one side connector that has uh, that has everything you need for RGB and turn signal. And the other side, same thing, RGB, turn signal, and parking lights. One thing I like to do is design it so that they only plug in one way. You can't cross the connectors from side to side. That way your turn signal is always gonna work the right way. Um, it just makes it easier for the customer. If you're wiring it up for yourself, you probably know what it's gonna be. So it's not that big of a deal, but if you wanna make it easier for yourself and for anyone else who may have those lights, I suggest trying to make the harness different from side to side so that it's easier for everyone. They know which way it's gonna go. If you do wanna take this one step further and make it extra professional and waterproof, use some potting epoxy. You mix this together and you pour it literally inside this box after you've tested it to make sure everything's working right. And then it's completely waterproof and you shouldn't have any issues with like the wires pulling out or any shorts inside here. Okay, bye.